Welcome once again to the forum. And welcome to the first Euphorum special. Twitkowski has an exclusive interview with Dr. J. Allen Hynek, a world-renowned UFO specialist. In November, you were reported to have said that Canada has an unusually high number of UFO sightings. Exactly how does this figure compare to the number of sightings in the United States? Well, I think what I said back in November was that Canada had more sightings per capita than the United States does. Now, the amount of sightings in any country is, uh, of course, dependent on the number of events that there are, but it also depends on the manner of reporting and what means there are of reporting. When you have uh, organized UFO groups who are actively seek reports, you're going to get more reports than in a country like, uh, well, uh, I suppose China, where they know of any uh, organized reporting system. Why would Canada have a, a large number of sightings? Well, of course, in the first place, it does. Uh, why is, of course, part of the whole research problem. Uh, it may have something to do with the fact that Canada has uh, large, wide-open territories, and uh, there seems to be a, a definite correlation between the occurrence of sightings and uh, places away from human habitation. Is the U.S. government conducting any sort of UFO investigation, official or unofficial? Well, certainly not official. And I think maybe the best way of answering the unofficial part is, uh, without getting myself in any trouble, uh, is simply to say that uh, it would be surprising to me that any government like the, uh, which is so intelligence conscious and spends so much money on the CIA and FBI and so forth, would uh, completely neglect a subject of this sort in which the... Uh, Gallup poll, for instance, says that 15 million Americans say they have seen UFOs and that 51 or so percent of Americans believe the subject is a serious one. It seems inconceivable to me that group would, official, unofficial group, would uh, not be uh, more than passing, passably interested in it. Is there then a, a UFO cover-up in effect? Well, if I had proof of that, I would, I think, uh, have a hold a press conference because I think that would be a mistake to have a cover-up. But until I had definite proof of it, uh, I would not... Uh, however, cover-up, one has to sort of define what one means by cover-up. There are various kinds of cover-up. Uh, one can cover up positive knowledge of something when you want to keep something really a secret. Or you can cover up ignorance. And sometimes people have classified things because they really didn't know what they were. And I think that is more the case with the UFOs. Uh, the government probably does not know what they are and uh, therefore desire not to panic the public or to... Uh, wait until they know more about it, or what have you, They're, they are not saying it. So that, uh, see, cover-up can be of various sorts. There are a number of uh, UFO, well, not UFO reports, but rather rumors to the effect that the U.S. government has some little green men and some flying saucer fragments in their possession. Is this true? Well, if it were true, it would certainly be an exciting story, and I would, I would like to think it might be true. But it, uh, again... I'm always bound by the uh, fact that I have to stick to scientific principles, and uh, the point is that I don't have enough evidence. There is no real evidence, as far as I know, <clears throat> that this is so. Uh, if it is so, then it's a very well-guarded secret. I'm sure that you're asked this question quite a bit. What are UFOs, then? I certainly do get asked that very often, and I've sort of developed, a, you might say, almost a standard answer. Uh, People will come to me after a talk, for instance, and say, well, now, maybe you couldn't have said this in the in, in public, in the group, but uh, you can tell me, uh, you've been working with this so long, what do you really think UFOs are? And I say, well, I'm glad you asked me that. Now, here in the corner, and now you tell me, what do you really think is the cure for cancer? Uh, and I try to point out by using that, that both the cancer and the UFO, while not related, are both research problems. And as I tell my students at Northwestern, if you know the answer, or you think you know the answer in advance, it's not research. This is a research problem, the same way the, as cancer is a research problem. The other things are multiple sclerosis is a research problem. UFOs, we don't know what UFOs are, and that's exactly what the U in UFO means. It means unidentified. What proof is needed before we can justify saying that flying saucers are coming to Earth? 
Well, I suppose the best proof would be in a mass in a mass invasion, a landing uh, uh, on the White House lawn with uh, hundreds of kings that would uh, of saucers. That would certainly be proof. Uh, scientifically, I think that what I'd like to see would be a an artifact or some part of either a saucer or something something left behind, which, for instance, when analyzed in the laboratory, would have a different uh, carbon uh, isotope ratio ratios. And uh, if we found a, a piece of a manufactured item that had a different carbon isotope ratio, then we'd know that it was manufactured on Earth. Mm-hmm. How reliable are UFO photographs? Um, it is impossible to call any, so far at any rate, any UFO photograph as absolute proof or genuine. I think if we could have 16 cameras photographing it from different angles and several movie cameras, even then some people would say it was, it was all a big hoax. Because remember, that today there are still people who say that the astronauts never landed on the moon. That was all done in Arizona, you know. Um, so, uh, a photograph is really no better than the person who gives it to you. If the person who gives it to you is highly reliable and describes the circumstances under which it was taken, and the taking of the photograph has had some witnesses, then I think uh, you have a very good reason to say that that's probably a genuine. Out of all the reports that the Center for UFO Studies receive, do, do the UFO reports fall into any specific pattern? Is, or are there more in the evening, or let's say in farmlands, or they, do they form lines that crisscross, or what? Very definite patterns. In fact, if they didn't form patterns, there would be very little hope of studying them scientifically, since uh, uh, if every report were totally different, then there's no scientific leverage, no way you could really study them. But they do form patterns. Not only the kinds of them form patterns, such as the daylight disks and uh, close encounters and so forth, but the time of day. There's a um, time uh, that it seems after statistical analysis that the greatest number of events, UFO events, but not UFO sightings, uh, a number of events occur in the wee hours of the morning when there are the least number of people available to see them and report them. Mm. And also there seems to be a positive correlation between the um, locality, the locale of s- the sightings or the landings, they seem to prefer isolated places. They don't seem to uh, prefer crowded cities, for instance, or it's, it's always the lonely places that seem to attract them or it's where they seem to go. How many reports does your center receive, let's say, per month? Well, over the, uh, over the hotline, we get an average of, say, two, a little less than 1.7 a day, but through letters and through cooperation with other UFO groups, uh, we get and incorporate into the UFO cat uh, probably uh, 50, oh no, more like 100, 150 a month. How many sightings are in the UFO cat? There are about some 80,000 entries, many of which are duplications, however. It, 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 uh, if you weed it out and come down to individual cases, they're probably about just a trifle less than 50,000. How many people do you have investigating for you, let's say, in the field? Uh, we are dependent very much on volunteer investigators from the various uh, organizations, such as um, MUFON and APRO and NICAP and uh, uh, other organizations that are smaller. Uh, the uh, investigators, in general, cooperate fairly well with us. Uh, although there's always some certain tendency to feel that uh, a report belongs to the to the particular organization that investigates it. Out of the reports that you get, what percentage are proven hoaxes? Very few. Very few, actually. Uh, lots of them are proven misidentifications or honest mistakes. But uh, relatively few are hoaxes. So you get these cases in which a college student sends up a hot air balloon and fools some people. And... Uh, or you'll get some kids that will dig holes in the ground and make up a story that a flying saucer landed there. But you see, to be a successful hoaxer, what is the point of doing a hoax if you don't eventually tell somebody about it and get a... a you, you Sooner or later, somebody confesses and says, gee, I really fooled him, you know, and so forth. A hoaxer that keeps his hoax a secret for years and years is... Um, what's the point of making a hoax? You give occupant, or uh, reported occupant, 
cases, uh, names such as close encounters of the third kind, mm -hmm. how many of those do you receive each month, let's say? Uh, very few. That, I think there'll be more of those that are made, uh, but there's a much greater reluctance on the part of people to report those because the chance of ridicule seems to be... It's a, if a person says he saw a strange light in the sky, well, there's no particular ridicule attaches to that. But if he says, I saw these three creatures get out of a craft, uh, then, uh, you know, people will sort of start shaking their heads. So generally we get reports like that, and this has been the, uh, the um, um, experience also of the organizations like uh, NICAP and APRO and MUFON, that um, they have to sort of get into the confidence of those people first, and then they'll tell the story. Is the risk of ridicule decreasing? Yes, very definitely. Uh, UFO is only a um, three-letter word, but it, in the past it has been given all the uh, hoopla associated with four-letter words, you know. And uh, it was a time that UFO was really a sort of, a, you might say, a dirty word. But, um, well, just as an example, uh, when I went to astronomical meetings uh, ten years ago, it, it would have been uh, bad of me, rather than been uh, foolhardy of me, to have... Uh, talked about UFOs, but today when I go to a meeting of the American Astronomical Society, for instance, uh, other astronomers will come up and say, well, by the way, how are things at the center going, or what's new with UFOs, or something like that. Are scientists now accepting that there is the possibility of extraterrestrial life? Quite apart from UFOs, most astronomers will certainly indicate that, because let me, uh, do I have time to give you just a short example? Uh, if you made a model of the everything that can be seen through the world's largest telescopes. And you made that model as large as Canada itself, so that um, Halifax would be as far as you can see in one way, and Vancouver would be as far as you can see in the other direction. Then on that scale, on that model, to scale, the Earth would not be visible even in an electron microscope. I suppose that it would be someplace in the middle of Manitoba, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, isn't it preposterous to think that this submicroscopic speck in Manitoba, someplace between Vancouver and Halifax, would be the only microscopic speck to have life on it. It's, it just it makes us entirely too special. But I refuse yet to jump to the conclusion, therefore, that that is what UFOs are. It, it's one hypothesis. On the topic of Manitoba, are you, do you have any knowledge of our Manitoba flying saucer hunting ground in Carmen? I saw just today the uh, 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 films taken there, the movies taken, and they are very impressive. It's... Um, uh, they match quite well. Well, they, they are a good example of what we'd call nocturnal light. You see, it's a very good example because the appearance and behavior doesn't match uh, a, a normal explanation like an aircraft or a balloon or something like that. Well, Dr. Heineck, we've been talking to you about uh, UFOs. Overall, how does Canada rate as compared to, let's say, the United States or France as far as investigating UFOs goes? Well, I think France would have to take the lead. They, they are actually giving it some government attention. I'm hoping very much that uh, Canada will organize a center for UFO studies, which would be entirely Canadian, of course, but which would cooperate with groups in the United States. Well, thank you very much, Doctor, for your time today. Euphorum is a Roger Maness, Chris Rakowski production. It can be heard each week at this same time. If you have any comments on the show or if you have anything to report, your call will be gladly accepted at 